Okay, Michael, we want to tap into your analytical brain, as always, about those 100 metres. So come with me, because I know you're a man who likes a gadget, you like a tool. Look what we've got for you over here, your very own piece of kit. Very nice. Uh, yeah, I know there are, there are some performances in particular you want to have a look from the 100 metres. Yeah. So should we start through British eyes with James Dasaoli, very disappointed, the British record holder, seemed to completely mismanage his race. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look here. So... A very good start from Dasa Alu, and he's very far forward. He's really far forward, probably more than he wanted to be, but he ends up in good position right here. He's leading the race in perfect position. Everything is going right until right now, where it's as if he feels like maybe the race is over, but it's not. It's 100 meters, and at 60, he's already starting to look over and starting to slow down and starting to slow himself, and he's slow far too early. That's the first look, and that's not at 100 meters. That's at 60 meters. Far too early in the race, he realizes now I'm in trouble. Now he looks over to see how much trouble am I in, and it's a lot, and <laughs> now it's all over. And it's just, it's unbelievable that a guy of his experience and with the type of opportunity that he had here that he wasn't better prepared to execute that race. He's a British record holder. He's a 991 runner. He's won a European championship. That, that was not the race of someone with that kind of experience, Daly. Well, to be honest, he's, he's running almost like a beginner. He's, he's just running like he's at school. And I think that one of the things he's going to need to go back is when he gets home is just start talking to his coach about, you know, why he can't use his experience to help him get, get through the rounds. Yeah, disappointing to say the least. Let's have a little look at Usain Bolt. And we've got an angle that you particularly want to look at, which is him head on. What did you learn from this? Yeah, so if you take a look here at uh, Usain Bolt in this race, and this is something that we see often with him. He doesn't have lateral stability, so you will see a lot of rocking back and forth. And pay particular attention here to the shoulders. And there's a lot of wasted motion. All of that energy that should be going into the track is spilling out. And so now we know that he does have, I learned this when I, I visited him in Jamaica and, and, and did a, a documentary on him for BBC years ago, that he has slight scoliosis in his back. But it's a real issue for him with all of that energy going side to side, where if you take a look at the comparison over here with Justin Gatlin on the left side of your screen, very solid lateral stability, shoulders straight. And all of that energy then is going into the track and putting him in the right direction and allowing him to take the power that he has, put that into the track with every step. Whereas with Bolt, he's collapsing on each side, swaying back and forth. So a lot of that energy then is actually spilling out, mm. as we say, and therefore it's not going into the performance and he's not able to get that out of, the, out, out of, him, out of his body. Yeah, that illustrates the inefficiency of his upper body brilliantly, but also if we look further down as well, uncharacteristic footwork. Absolutely, and this is something that I talked about earlier today when some people kind of didn't understand my American jargon when I said that he looks very clunky, and he does at the start. If you just look at what's happening, he doesn't look smooth. Things are going all over the place. It just doesn't look smooth, and he says, forget it, I'm going to abandon that, and comes out of it, and that's when he starts to take over and actually win the race when he gets out of the drive phase. So if you look here, what we see is clunky means that then this foot is very close to the ground. The heel should be up of two inches or so above that, but it's already flat, which means he came out of the blocks flat-footed, and so then that means that instead of him being able to tap the track and push off each time with a lot of rigid and stability and a lot of uh, a state stability to get that power, he doesn't get that. He collapses. So I'm sure that that's something that he'll be aware of, he'll see, and he'll be mm. able to make the adjustment tomorrow. His, his contact time a lot longer than he would hope it to be, unlike this man. Trayvon Brumel. Trayvon Brumel, young American sprinter. This is a lesson in technique, which is amazing given that he just turned 20 years old uh, 43 days ago, I believe. So take a look at this technique. No wasted motion, no energy spilling out. Every step, every motion, everything he's doing is going into the track and propelling him forward. If we look at the head on here, you look, his feet don't go outside of the plane. They're right there straight in front of him. That means that he's going in a straight line with every step. And this is just amazing technique for a young man who's so young in the sprints. He's just finished his second year of, uh, at Baylor University. 
in, in the university system in America so he could really truly be the future of American sprinting because of this technique. So there's nothing that I could point out, and I don't think there's anything that his coach Michael Ford could possibly improve on in far, as far as the technique. It, his improvement is going to come in better speed endurance and better foot speed. And he's five foot eight, so he gives hope to everyone who thought the future was six foot three sprinters. So if you had to go on today's performances alone, call it for tomorrow. This race I still can't call because even though people are starting to get a little bit down on and, and starting to lose their hope that Usain Bolt's going to be able to pull this out, I don't believe that's accurate. I think that he is going to know exactly what he did. You can fix that overnight. And that's the good thing for Bolt, and that bodes well for him. So I think that tomorrow we still have an amazing matchup, and it could go either way.